Just before we start the episode, here's a trailer for another podcast. If you like what you hear, go and check it out. Remember those stories you were supposed to read in high school? Oh, uh, Dickens. Poe. That's literally all the names I can think of. Did you read them? Obviously I didn't. Let us read them for you. Uh, That sounds dangerous. What does? Reading. (laughs) It might go badly. But that's half the fun. I'm Ken Sandberg. And I'm Heather Michelle Lawler. Check out Campfire Classics, where we try to read those books that look really good on your shelf. Campfire Classics is available wherever you listen to podcasts. Listen, like, follow. Hi, I'm Laura. And I'm Joe. And this is Crank Divers. everybody welcome back hello here we are again for another episode god what have we got to do then it's called a house of horrors oh that sounds like a you know when you go to like a a theme park or something and you have like a haunted house it's not haunted oh okay (laughs) (laughs) all right okay then no it's just got horrors in it okay where is it the uk Oh, we're in the UK. Yeah. So, when me me and Laura, we like to watch a lot of, like, sort of, like, dramas that have, like, maybe two, three, four parts. Yeah. So, and we always recommend them to each other, mm-hmm. what to watch. So, I recommended a show for you to watch. Right. But I bet you never watched it. Right? <laughs> well, what was it called? It was called Rillington Place. <laughs> See? I, I knew it. I don't even remember that. I tell her all the time, I always, like, when I've watched something that's really good, I always tell her to watch it. I even sometimes write lists. I do watch them sometimes, tell her though. to watch them. Yeah, but this case is about that programme. Well, maybe it'll make me even watch it now. <laughs> I don't think it's still on. It was on mm. Netflix, but mm. I watched it, oh, hmm, maybe at least three Four years ago, maybe something like that. All right, okay, yeah. I've probably got no chance. And I would have told you to watch it, but of course, well, I do watch sometimes, but some slips through, isn't it? Right. Well, anyway, it was got it was it was just called Rillington Place, right. and it actually had Jodie Comer in it. You All know, right. from Killing Eve. Uh huh. She was in it. All right. Um, and it was quite good. <laughs> All right. Well, and that's how I've heard of this guy because I didn't, I hadn't heard of him before that. Right. Okay. Um, but you know, I just saw that it was based on. A real guy, so I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna watch it." So, oh, so we're gonna dive into this. We're one gonna then? dive into this one. So, Ro- <laughs> I can't even start off correctly. No, you can't. Hey, right. John Reginald Halliday Christie was known as Reg Christie. Right. Thank God I was gonna say, <laughs> I know, yeah. gonna say that name the whole it's time. Just, it's just Reg. Just Reg. Yeah, just Reg. He was born in Halifax, England, on the eighth of April, eighteen ninety nine. Oh, another one. Another older one. Mm-hmm. Um, he was one of seven children, and he was the youngest male in the mostly female household. Uh-huh. But he resented the fact because the girls in the family had power over him because they used to like boss him about and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Right, and it made him like sort of crave the opportunity for authority. Like he just he was just kind of downtrodden by and bullied by these girls, and it made mm-hmm. it kind of gave him a kind of a sense that he wanted that he wanted that authority. Yeah, so. He was a good kid at school. Like he joined the scouts and he sang in the local choir. But when he joined the scouts, he loved the uniform and he even wore it when he wasn't at scouts because okay. it felt like it gave him like definition, like a role to play. So I mm-hmm. think like we'll have him. As I said, he was one of seven children, mm-hmm. and he was. I think he was the second youngest. Right. And he was the youngest male, so I think he just obviously just didn't feel like he had a a place really. Like he didn't know where he sort of fit mm-hmm. fit in. Yeah. So, one of Reg's first sexual experiences is believed to have made a significant impact on the way that he viewed women. I think he already viewed them in not a very good way, but... Oh, yeah, sounds like it. This girl, she had more experience than Reg, and he wasn't able to have sex with her. Like, he just couldn't, couldn't get it up, basically. <laughs> right, okay. So, of course, she, girls being girls, she told her friend, and then her friend told another friend, and mm-hmm. soon everyone knew. So, he was, he was nicknamed things like... Can't do it, Christy and Reggie Nodick. Oh, right, okay. So, as you can imagine, he must have been humiliated. Yeah, I mean, totally, that's, totally. It's not on, really, is it? No. But, you know, it's what 
teenagers or kids do you mm. something happens and you tell your friends yeah and before you know it people know about it and sadly somebody has to get so it's, it's not nice no it's not so when reg left school he worked as a cinema operator he then had a brief stint in the army and then he became a postman funny enough i was going to ask you like like did he go on to do like a sort of uniform job because of them being sort of with the scouts i did wonder yeah. whether he'd end up with a sort of uniform yeah, the job. army postman yeah yeah mm-hmm. And uh, later on, uh, there's another one as well. So, mm. when he was 21, he met Ethel Simpson Warrington. And they got married on the 10th of May, 1920. They didn't have sex very often, as he continued to suffer with impot- impotency. Mm-hmm. Ethel, she had a miscarriage early on in the marriage, and she never got pregnant again, so they had no children. Right. When Reg was working as a postman, he started stealing postal orders, and he got caught. So, he spent three months in prison. When he was released, he split up with Ethel and he moved to London. For the next 10 years, he was just drifting from, like, job to job. Like, he didn't have, like, a proper home. He was just, like, moving from house to house. He was mixing with criminals. And the only way he managed to have sex was by visiting sex workers. Right. And during this time, he, he was just in and out of prison. Mm-hmm. So, not not having a great time with it, really. No, doesn't but sound like it. eventually, after, you know, as I said, after 10 years, he decided that he wanted respectability. So he managed to persuade Ethel to get back together with him, which is quite impressive after 10 years. Well, I was just going to say, You'd yeah. think by 10 years you'd be like, nah, she nah, was, mate, I'm over you. She obviously didn't move on, or if she did, it didn't work out either. No, so they moved to Notting Hill in London. Mm-hmm. They moved into a flat at 10 Rillington Place. Um, no one here knew of his criminal past, so he set out to be to become a respected member of the community. Mm-hmm. He saw an advert in the paper for a special constable with the police, so he applied for that. So since they didn't do any background checks, mm-hmm. which you'd think the police would, well, yeah, I would have thought so. Um, he got the job. Mm-hmm. So he had now, you know, he had power over the community. Like that's what right. he wanted, yeah. you know. And he exploited it. Like for instance, he would go to sex workers and get their services for free, right. and in return he would turn a blind a blind eye mm-hmm. to like how they were making their money. Mm-hmm. So the area that they lived in was poor, and because of the war, so many women like they lost their partners, so they'd like turn to sex work like mm-hmm. to earn their money. Right. So because of that, there was a lot of unwanted pregnancies. So Reg and Ethel decided to make some money by carrying out illegal abortions in their kitchen. Okay. Why would you even think of that? How would you even know what to do? Well, yeah, I don't understand that. No, like. Back at, like, in the 19-whatevers it was, like, 1940s, mm-hmm. you've not got the internet to teach you how to do things. Like, because like, now, obviously not abortions, but, like, if I ever want to do something, if I don't know how to do it, mm-hmm. I go straight on to Google and yeah, you YouTube like, and find out how to do something. Like an idiot's guide to how to do it. Yeah. So how you would find out how to do an abortion, I have no idea. No, me neither. So in 19... 19- no, sorry, missed a bit. <laughs> um, they had a deck chair, so, uh, which... So you know, picture up a deck chair, and you know how you'd have that norm, the normal bit that you sit in, the mm-hmm. material yeah. that you would sit in. Well, that was removed, right? And there was like rope in its place, so it was like a sort of net right, with okay. like the big gaps. Uh-huh. So that's where the girl would sit for the abortion. Right. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, is there, is there a significance to that? Well, I'm assuming that because, well, if they're bleeding and stuff, it'll just come. And the, when it comes out, it'll just come through the, the uh, net right, bit. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Right. It didn't look very nice. Oh, you saw a picture? Or, oh, yeah. Oh, or like in the, 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 the thing it showed you? In what thing? Uh, like the series? or? Oh, uh, no, I, I watched a documentary and I uh, saw, I don't know if it was that particular chair, but like you oh, did right. see a, a deck chair with a rope. Right, okay. Do you, can you not picture what I mean? No, I might have to Google it. Well, it's like you're sitting on a net. Okay. So they had a they had a tube. You had a tube. <laughs> Shut up. And they would run it from the gas stove and they used like this sort of tin to use as a mask and that's how Reg would knock the girls out. Right. And then Ethel would perform the abortion. Oh, so she would do it? Mm-hmm. Well, no, I don't think, well, later on I don't, because I, I think there's a bit in it where well, I'm not quite sure where Ethel is, so I think. I'm not quite. I'm not quite sure if he does them when she's not there, because right. like, she does go away to visit. Well, she's about to go and visit her sister now. Right. So maybe he does them while she's away. I don't know. Okay. Um. In 1943, Ethel went to visit her sister in Sheffield, 
While she was away, Reg became involved with a local sex worker called Ruth Furst. She came to the flat regularly, but then one day Reg got a telegram from Ethel saying that she was coming back. So Reg didn't want to take the chance that Ruth might turn up at the flat one day and tell Ethel about them, so he decided he had to kill Ruth. So Lovely. when they were having sex for the last time, he strangled her um, with a bit of rope, and then he wrapped her coat around her and put her body under the floorboards. Then the next again day, he buried her in the back garden. Lovely. So the first murder had given him a thrill. And it wasn't long before he was looking for his next victim. Right. So by this time, he'd given up his job as a special constable and he found a job at a radio factory. Now, like at this this is the point. I'd, I'm not quite sure where Ethel is at this point because she'd sent the telegram to say she was coming back. Uh-huh. But yet he's looking for another victim. So I'm not sure if she came back and went away again or she decided not to come back at this point. I don't know. Right. Um. So... Right, so at the radio factory, Reg met Muriel Edie. They would eat together in the canteen at work and they became friends. Uh, she told him that she suffered from catarrh, which is a build-up of mucus in an airway or like a cavity of the body. Mm-hmm. So Reg told her that he could cure it by using a breathing device and told her to come to the flat. So when she arrived, he put a mask to her face, but obviously it was connected to the gas, yeah, and he knocked her unconscious. He then raped her and then strangled her with a rope. He buried her next to Ruth in the back garden. And as no one knew that either woman had visited Reg, he, he, was near, he wasn't That's, a suspect no. in the disappearances. Uh-huh. So in 1948, a couple called Timothy and Beryl Evans, that's who Jodie Comer was, she was Beryl. Right, okay. They moved into the top floor flat at 10 Rillington Place. Reg and Ethel lived on the ground floor. Right. So Timothy and Beryl had moved from Wales. They were... Um, they were both in their early 20s, newly married, and Beryl was pregnant. So later, Beryl gave birth... Birth? Birth? She gave birth. <laughs> Beryl gave birth. <laughs> Beryl gave birth uh-huh. to a little girl called Geraldine. But the tiny fl- top floor flat wasn't the ideal place to raise a child. So when Beryl became pregnant again, they panicked. Right. So Timothy didn't earn very much money, and they were, as I said, like they were already like cramped in this tiny flat. Yeah. So Beryl wanted to have an abortion, but Timothy was against it. Mm-hmm. But she tried to do it herself by taking pills. Right. And I don't know how, but it's like Reg found out about it, and he offered to do the abortion for her. All right. Okay. Um. So she told Timothy that Reg was going to do the abortion, and she must, you know, I bet he. I don't think he really had much choice in the matter. She was like, I'm doing it, and that's it. Yeah. So he went off to work that morning. Mm-hmm. But when he came home that night, Reg told him that Beryl had died during the procedure. Mm. But what had actually happened was that Reg had knocked Beryl out with the gas, raped her, and strangled her to death. Right, okay. But obviously he just said that she didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the procedure went wrong. Oh, the abortion. So Reg told Timothy that if, that if he went to prison, then so would... So would he, so would Timothy, because he let Reg do the abortion, so he was an accessory. <laughs> because obviously abortions were illegal. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So because he let him do it, he, didn't he was, a, he was an, access, an accessory. Mm-hmm. So Reg told Timothy that they would have to cover it up. Right. So they put Beryl's body in an empty room, and Reg told Timothy that he would get rid of the body down a manhole that was outside in, in, like, in the street. Right. Are you yawning? No. You did, didn't you? You just yawned. <laughs> Am I boring you? No. <laughs> just, just, you know, had an early morning, that's all. And we're actually lying on a bed. We're lying on a bed today. Yes, we're so, in a different, different... Uh, we're in a different room, and because usually we we do it in the living room, but somebody was cutting down hedges outside, and it was noisy at the front of the house, so we're at the back of the house. Yeah. And... I'm quite comfy, actually. Oh, it's quite comfy. Is that why you're yawning? <laughs> no, I'm like, I could just go to sleep, but I can't because no. I need to listen to this story. Yes, you have to listen to this story because... Well, well that's why we're here. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Reg also told Timothy that he knew of a childless couple who would take Geraldine and bring her up as their own. What, so he was going to give up his child as well? Yes, Timothy agreed. Oh, my God. Right. He must have... I think Timothy was a bit... Um, like quite, he he didn't have a very high IQ, right. and it was quite easily led, quite easily manipulated. So right, okay. you know, Reg obviously persuaded him that this was a good idea. Yeah, it was for Reg, the best. Yeah, for yeah. the best. Um. So yeah, Timothy agreed. So he moved back, and he moved back to Wales. 
to stay with relatives. But obviously, Tim Timothy and Beryl's family is watching over where Beryl and the baby were. So I don't know if they'd maybe started off telling them a lie, but then it just it got too much. He was mm -hmm. racked with guilt, so he went to the police station. Right. And he made two two statements. So the first one, the first statement, oh, I just put myself in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was leaning, I was leaning my head on my hand, and I, it slipped, and I just put myself in the eye. <laughs> <You're lucky. laughs> so, so the first statement was that his wife had died whilst having an abortion. And that he had disposed of her down a manhole in Rillington Place. He must have been not willing to take the blame. Like, mm. I don't know why. Maybe he maybe was scared of Reds or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So the police went there and they looked down the manhole, but they found nothing. Right. So Timothy then changed his statement. He made a second statement saying that Reg had killed Beryl. Right. Um, so he told the police that when he had got there after work, um, Reg had told him that um, Beryl had died and she'd... He'd asked how long Beryl had been dead, mm -hmm. and Reg had said he'd been she'd been dead since three p.m. and that her stomach had been septic poisoned, and that's how she died. Ooh. So, well, that's not how she died, but that's, oh, that's not how she died. Yeah, no. not, <laughs> <laughs> so the police went back to Rillington Place and interviewed Reg. He denied it, and because he had like a sort of respectability, because he, you know, yeah, and, yeah, all that. Uh -huh. Um, they obviously believed him over timothy and he t he told them that timothy was an abusive alcoholic right and that he must have killed his wife so the police searched tem rillington place and behind a wood pile in the wash house they found the remains of beryl and baby geraldine oh so they had both been strangled <gasps> why kill the baby i don't know why oh. why didn't he just let her go off to a childless couple or let timothy take child yeah, exactly i don't know why I, I have no idea why he had to kill geraldine that was never explained Aww. or anything he didn't give no in fact he always denied it anyway he never admitted that he killed right. geraldine okay so timothy was taken to the police station and after lengthy interrogation he confessed to the murders of his wife and daughter he confessed yeah so basically what like timothy he couldn't read or write very well so someone at the police station was supposed to write down everything he said and he just had to sign it. Right. So, but they obviously twisted his words and whatever. Basically, he he, he signed the confession without realising it. So he, he was charged um, with the murder of his daughter Geraldine. The prosecution decided not to pursue a second charge of murder, murdering his wife. I don't know why they didn't. Maybe they just thought one one was enough. Right, right. I, I don't know why. Right. But he pled not guilty, obviously, because mm -hmm. he didn't do it. Yeah. Um. But Reg was the chief witness, and he said... <laughs> well, he was the chief witness? Yeah, he said he had oh heard God. a thud the night that Bera was killed, and again, he accused Timothy of being an abusive alcoholic. So the trial lasted for three days, and after just 14 minutes of deliberation... The jury found Timothy guilty of murder and he what? was sentenced to death. Oh my God, what a shame. Mm -hmm. Absolutely awful, isn't it? That is so Reg went off on holiday to Sheffield and Timothy appealed to the Home Secretary, but he was unsuccessful. So Timothy Evans was hanged <gasps> on... Oh my God, he actually got killed. Yeah. Oh my God. He was hanged God. on the 9th of March, 1950 at Pentonville Prison. That's awful. He protested his innocence right till the end, but it, it did no good. In the eyes of the law, the case was closed and they had punished the right person. That's giving me goosebumps. <laughs> that's, hor that's absolutely awful, isn't it? Like, that's really bad. I mean, you let you killed somebody and then you let somebody else die. Exactly. And actually probably like sort of condemned them by giving the evidence as well. You mm -hmm. were stood there and said, no, it was you. Yeah, like he just totally put the blame on him and, and you know, he, so he was responsible for his death as well. Well, yeah, he was really. So... The landlord at Rillington Place moved new tenants in and Reg was, he was like living in fear that Ruth and Muriel's bodies might be found in the garden. So he was like obviously stressed and him and Ethel, Ethel was back at this point. Right. So him and Ethel were arguing a lot. She was depressed and she was on tablets and it's thought that maybe she was putting two, starting to put two and two together and she was maybe asking Reg questions about what really happened right. to Beryl and Geraldine. Mm -hmm. So on the 14th of December 1952, Reg strangled Ethel in their bed with a stocking. Oh my God, so he killed his wife as well? Yeah, they'd been married for 32 years. And he killed his wife. 32 years. That's... 
So he wrapped her body in a blanket and placed her under the floorboards. Right. So just days after Ethel's murder, there was a theft in one of the other flats. So the police were there and interviewing everybody. The policeman who went into Reg's flat um, went went in the living room and he he actually complained about the smell. He was like, "What what the hell is that smell?" Mm-hmm. And he said that he'd, he'd never smelled anything like that before. Right. And Reg just blamed it like on other people's cooking. Like uh, really? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you know, obviously he was standing on top of Beryl's remains. Yeah. You know, so how does somebody's cooking smell like death? I mean, I've never smelled death. No, no. But from what I've heard, it's not pleasant. No, and surely it can't be cooking. It like, can't smell like somebody's cooking, so surely. I suppose and surely you'd know that that's not food. But yeah, I mean, the policeman, as I said, he said he'd never smelled that before. He must have come across it. Yeah. So he just didn't know. He just thought he was a skank, maybe. Mm. <laughs> so. Um, but like late, actually later when Reg had been caught, the that same policeman, he asked what had happened after the girls were operated on, because obviously like later on they find the bodies and you yeah. find exactly what happened. <laughs> but Reg said he would put them in the front room to recover. Ethel caught him touching a girl inappropriately, right. and she threatened to tell the police, and that's why he killed her. Right. So that's why I'll just put that, even though that's yeah. later. It was yeah. just to let you know that's why. But that's right. why um, he killed Ethel. Right. So, so getting back to just so just after he killed Ethel, Reg told everyone that she was away visiting her sister. Right. So now that he had the flat to himself, he went looking for a new victim. But he was panicking a minute ago about women finding. Well, one, yeah, so. I know, but I think he was. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe he killed Ethel and he sort of got away with that, so he's kind of got a bit more confidence. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Men are weird. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so Rita Nelson, she worked at a local tea shop, and when she felt pregnant, she asked Reg to help her. So, it must have been well known that he... I was going to say, they must have, yeah, it must have yeah, been well known that he did that. It must be. I just know that she asked him. So. Right, okay. Unless he, she may maybe mentioned she was pregnant, and he said to her, I could do it for you, so she, then she just asked for help. Yeah, I don't course. know. I, we can't know every single detail. No. So she went to the flat for the abortion... But after knocking her out, he raped and murdered her. He had an alcove in the kitchen and it had like a sort of cupboard door across, like over the front of it. So he, he put Rita's body in there. His next victim was Kathleen Maloney. He had, he, he'd had, I'm not sure if she was actually a sex worker because he had had sex with her previously. Right. And because he only seemed to be able to do it with sex workers, uh-huh. I'm thinking maybe she was. Right. Um, but this time after having sex, he killed her. He put... Her body next to Rita's in the kitchen alcove. So he's got two bodies in this oh, alcove right. and, and Ethel's under the floorboards. Uh, and the two in the garden. Yeah. Are you, are you seeing now why it's called the House of Horrors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So Reg then met Hectorina McLennan. <laughs> I know what. It, it's. I've never heard that name before. What? <laughs> Hectorina. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to laugh. She's a I victim. I know. I know I laughed as well. I'm just I'm I'm laughing because it makes me sort of think like like they maybe they wanted a boy called Hector and they just got lazy and couldn't think of another name and just well, put the girl and, and put Ina at the end. I have no idea, but that's her name. And sorry, Hectorina McLennan, I, R.I.P. But we're not laughing at you. You just we've just never heard that name before. No, I've certainly never heard that name. <laughs> no, I. I mean, it does just. Say, I mean, you've obviously heard of Hector, but not Hectorina. <laughs> So he met, Reg met her and she needed somewhere to live. He offered to let her stay at his flat, but she brought her boyfriend, Alex Baker. Mm-hmm. So Reg wasn't happy, but he still let them stay. But they only stayed for three days and then they decided to leave. Right. So Reg asked Hectorina to come back and visit him. So she did, mm-hmm. but he strangled and raped her. And oh, my ankle just cracked there. Um you know, I, yeah, it, it, usually raped and then strangled, but this one he actually strangled then raped. Oh. I don't know why that was different. All right, okay. But he then put, he put her body in the alcove as well. So there was three bodies in this tiny little alcove. Oh, for God's sake. But then he put wallpaper over it, because I remember there was like a sort of cupboard door there. Yeah. So then he just wallpapered over it. So, wallpapered over a cupboard door? Yeah, so it just looked like part of the wall. All right. So like, you would never know that anything was behind that. You would just, just think, think it was the a, just the wall. Right. So, of course, Alex, the boyfriend, came looking for Hectorina, 
But Reg just said, do you know what I'm thinking of? I'm, I, I do apologise, but I'm thinking Hectorina. I'm thinking of Vampirina. It sounds like a sort of cartoony name. Maybe oh, that's yeah. why I was laughing. Yeah. Oh. It does, doesn't it? Like sort of Vampirina, Hectorina. It sounds like, I, I think it sounds like a hedgehog that's like a cartoon character. <laughs> Seriously, you're putting way too much thought into that. <laughs> like, move on. <laughs> that's our name and that's it. <laughs> Us. <laughs> people have weird and wonderful names oh i know i mean there's a lot worse than hectorina but it, it, it's just there was something in the back of my mind just thinking mm. it just sounds like something and that's what it reminded me of right Brilliant. carry on right so reg said that she hadn't turned up to alex uh-huh. alex was really worried i need to stop moving my foot because my ankle keeps cracking mm-hmm. alex was really worried so reg made him a cup of tea just crack, just crack. Did your ankle just crack? Oh my god, we're getting old. I know we are. Right, but let me get back. Sorry. To... Right, I'm going to start that whole paragraph again. Right, so of course, Alex came looking for Hectorina, but Reg just the said that. She... <laughs> Hector, oh, for God's sake. Sorry. Right. <sighs> Seriousness, we're talking about. I know, sorry. Like... Right, okay. Go. Carry on. So of course, Alex came looking for Hectorina, but Reg just said that he had that she hadn't turned up. Alex was really worried, so Reg made him a cup of tea, and they went out to look for her. So over the, and over the next few days, like Reg even kept visiting Alex to ask if there was any news of her. He's obviously a very very strange. Yeah, like just and to do things like that, it's just cold. Do you know and who it sounds like though? Who? It sounds very similar. To what's his face? Well, <laughs> yeah. The Nielsen guy, did, Dennis like, Nielsen. Yeah, because was he not in the police and stuff like that? And then he like had all these bodies that he'd he had bodies, kept on these yeah. floorboards and yeah. in the garden. It sounds quite similar to him, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, right enough. Yeah. But he just did it with men, and this one does it with women. Why? Yeah. Um. So Reg was starting to get nervous with the bodies piling up in the flat. So he decided he wanted to move away, but he had no money. So he came up with the idea to sublet the flat. He met a couple and he told them he was the landlord and that they could move in straight away. So they paid him the rent money for the next few weeks and paid him in advance. Yeah. And on the 20th of March, 1953, he packed a bag and left, leaving the flat with six bodies there. There must be an awful smell. Well, you would think. Mm. But, oh, sorry, I need to move. So the day that the couple moved in, mm-hmm. the real landlord actually visited the flat Oh, um, yeah. And when he saw the couple there and said, Reg, he told them that they had they had to leave the next morning. Right. So on the 24th of March, so this is only four days after Reg has left, mm-hmm. the landlord let the tenant of the top floor flat use Reg's kitchen. Right. No idea why. Right, okay. Um, and he, he, he must have asked him to put up some shelves as well. So... The ma- so the, the the tenant he discovered the alcohol because he attempted to like put brackets onto the wall. Oh, because it probably like a perfect place to put. Yeah, yeah. So he ripped the wallpaper off and he found the three women's bodies. Oh. So the police were called and they searched Ten Rillington Place and they found the remains of all six women mm-hmm. that Reg had killed. So Reg, he must have probably seen it on the news or something or in a newspaper mm-hmm. that the police knew what he would done. So he yeah. went on the run. Uh-huh. On the 31st of March, a man was stopped by the police on the embankment near Putney Bridge. He said his name was John Warrington, which was actually Ethel's maiden name, Warrington. Oh, right, and okay. his name's John. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh-huh. and then they found out that he was actually Reg Christie. Right. So he was taken to Putney Police Station and accused of killing his wife, Ethel. Mm-hmm. But Reg claimed that it was a mercy killing. He said that she had woken up and she was like convulsing and like she was unable to breathe, so he just like put her out of her misery basically and killed her. That's right. What he said. Okay then. Funny how he strangled her. You I know. was going to say, you know, you're lying there, Reg. Yeah. <laughs> and then he claimed that the other murders were either acts of self defence or they were accidents. Okay then. So Reg was charged with the murders of four women, but for. It, I, I don't really understand this, but it said for um, the law meant that it was only. He could only be tried for one. And uh, I don't know why. All right. But the prosecution decided that the strongest case was for the murder of Ethel. Right, okay. So the trial lasted for four days. And when asked if he had committed more murders than there were that were known about, he replied, quote, I can't say exactly I might have done. So if he did, it's never been found See, out that about. Sounds like Dennis Nielsen again, because did he not say that? He um I can't... 
Yeah, I think I I, I think he kind of confessed to more than they yeah. actually found. Yeah. I think or, it was something like that. Yeah. But then he said later that he was sort of bigging himself up to make mm. it look like oh, he'd true. killed more. Mm. Um, so I don't. We don't know if he has. Yeah. If he did, well, the bodies haven't been found. No, okay. And it'd be a bit weird because obviously, but buried all every all the, everybody that he killed was in. Oh, he didn't. He place, didn't do very so. well at disposing, did he? No. <laughs> so if he did kill anybody else, then he would have had to have buried them somewhere else. So I don't know. No, we, no. They've never been found. So no. he was maybe just being an arse. Mm. So Reg <laughs> pleaded insanity, but two psychiatri- psych- psychiatrics? No. Mm. Two psychiatrists. Mm-hmm. I always get those words mixed well, up. i to correct yourself. <laughs> yeah. Two psychiatrists said that he had a hysterical personality, but he was not insane. Right. So he knew... And that he knew exactly what he was doing and that he had planned everything. So Reg also admitted to killing Beryl Evans. Oh, God, yeah. But he refused to take responsibility for baby Geraldine's murder. Right. So So then they'd be thinking, oh, we've just killed an innocent man there. Yep. So the jury deliberated for an an hour and 20 minutes and Reg was found guilty of murdering Ethel and he was sentenced to death by hanging. On the 15th of July, 1953, John Reginald Christie was hanged at Pentonville Prison and 10 Rillington Place was knocked down. Um, So in 1966, Timothy Evans was granted a posthumous pardon. So that also means like Ah, after after his his digest. He got a posthumous pardon and that meant that his remains could be returned to his family. So they had him reburied in a private grave. And in 2003, the Home Office awarded Timothy's sisters compensation for the miscarriage of justice in his trial. Well, I'm pleased about that because what a shame for that guy. I mean, I know, obviously, you can't take back taking somebody's life because it's done. And, you know, so he didn't deserve to die, obviously. But, you know, at least he had to give him a bit of dignity by letting, letting him be reburied and, well, compensating his family, I suppose. That's, that's probably one of the reasons why the death penalty was, is, was scrapped because... Well, yeah, because at least if you put someone in prison and then you realise that, you know, they were wrongfully convicted, they can be released and still go and live their life. I mean, obviously, they won't get back the years that they've had, etc. No, but... But it's... at least they could... But, you know, if, once you kill somebody, you kill somebody. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You can't, you can't take that back, so... That poor guy. I know, what a shame. What an absolute shame. So, that, uh, that uh, Reg Christie, what a monster to let that happen. Mm-hmm. Totally. So, and, well, he was a monster for doing what he did as well. So, I mean, like, he was just... Uh, well, yeah, evil, evil like, man. he killed people. He didn't even take responsibility for the baby, and then he let somebody else take, mm. no. take the you know somebody die for him. Like yeah. just, Watching. yeah. So yeah, but I don't, I don't think the Rellington Place is on Netflix anymore. Because yeah. actually, actually, now that you've just told me the story, I'm like, oh, I actually quite like to watch that. I mean, you might be able to find it somewhere else. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube, you might be able to find it on there, but um, as I said, I mean, it was it must have been at least maybe three or four years ago that I watched it, so... Oh, okay. I mean, you could try Netflix and see if it is, but I haven't yeah. seen it, like, when I've been sort of looking through, I've never noticed it yeah. being on there. So, yeah, so there's... There's your... House of Horrors. House of Horrors, yeah. Mm, it was a House of Horrors. It was definitely. That's a flat of Horrors, but House of Horrors oh, yeah. sounds better. Oh, yeah, House of Horrors. Better. Well, no, actually, because there was a, two bodies in the garden as well, so that's sort of part of the house. It's fine. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so if you would like to follow us on social media, we are crime underscore divers underscore pod. We have a Facebook page, crime divers podcast. You can email us at crime underscore divers underscore pod at outlook.com. We have a YouTube, crime divers podcast. And if you would like to support us on Patreon, it's patreon.com slash crime divers. You can get early access to episodes and we do two Patreon only episodes a month and tears start from us later. Oh, we have our fuck ups. Oh. <laughs> I just look. What? <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of bloopers on yeah, there, you yeah. know, just. Yeah, us. We decided to record, well, not record them because we obviously did record them, but I mean, like, we decided to put them together and. Yeah, there's a couple them. there um, <laughs> of us just, you know. Being idiots. Yeah, not being able to speak properly and Which, stuff. I happens got, all the time. Yeah, I think I farted on... No, did I fart or burp or something on one of them? I don't really <laughs> know that. <laughs> That's there. It's on Patreon. Anyway. Um, yeah, so the tiers start as little as £1 a month. And also, if you like the show, 
Subscribe, rate, review. Well done. Hey. Bye. Bye.